Hey everyone, I'm Jack Maloney and I'm here with Max Pittenhouse today to share some of my behind the scenes moments with you. I'll be answering some candid questions along with my drifting journey and some memorable moments, so please buckle up and enjoy. So question number one that I have, when did you get your first one and how was the feeling? So my first one would have been in 2021. At the time, we were driving the same car with an S54 MC engine. And um, we got our first one at Irish Drift Championship round one, I believe. Now, this was in Pro 2 times as well. So, I I started off when I was nine and a half. And I worked my way up till I was 15 or 16, I started competitive drifting. And that feeling was something I'll never forget. Just standing at the podium waiting to hear my name called out there was just a tingle down my back I just it was just everything was so enjoyable and just like when i came home i watched the videos of it over and over again that were took at me at the podium and i still watch them to this day because that that first time one on the drift event is just it sits in your heart so that it really does and like you know you never will forget that along with your career Question number two that I have is, how has your drifting style evolved since you started? So, as a young age, like I started when I was nine and a half, and when you're nine and a half, you're pretty small, obviously, and you're in a big car, and you're sort of scared of the car. But now that myself physically, I've grown, my mindset's grown, and we've had maybe four years now, five years now in that car, and you learn every little movement in the car, you learn the size of the car and you just get more comfortable in the car. When you get more comfortable, you're fit to do a lot more with the car than you ever could imagine. Like your entries, I used to be very tentative with my entries and like I was always sort of, I don't know what you word it, maybe scared of the car, but now that like everything's evolved, my driving's come along now five or six years in the same car, I've just got more comfortable and just know what the car is going to do and you can just go 110% on every run. How do you stay motivated and passionate about drifting? So, I used to go to Irish Drift Championship back in maybe 2015 and 16 and I mind watching the British Drift Championship live as well online and just, I always had I always had a deep passion for drifting and as you, when you become a driver you get more involved in the drifting obviously. Like standing in the grandstands you're always wishing that you were there, you always wish that you were driving on track but when you actually get on track you're then saying okay I need to push myself to do this and that to make myself a better driver and then that works up to your podium. I think when you get the first one you think okay I want the second one, I want the third one. I want to win a championship. I want to want to maybe go to this championship and win it as well. You know, so it does grow every year. But in the past, like I'm, I've been passionate about drifting now. Ten years since I was a young boy, and I still am a young boy now. But uh, I'll never leave. You always, everybody has that one thing, maybe sport, or cooking, or just any sort of activity that you have a deep passion for. You'll never lose it, like, no matter how much. Why don't you feel now that you'll always just want to be the best at what you love doing? So, would you rather race with unpredictable weather conditions or race with a challenging and twisty layout? I'm going to say a challenging... I would nearly mix both because when I started drifting, we used to go to a track called Eglinton Airfield, which was, as it says in the tin, it was an abandoned airfield. And it was always run wet because it was wet concrete and it was just a small nimble track to use learn on and i drove on that track for four years so personally i would say i'm a better driver in the wet than i am the drive because i've had more experience but i've also had four or five years steady experience on a short nimble track so the likes of like i've been more comfortable at 360 motorsport park in Kerry which is the final round of IDC this year because it's just, it's full of different turns and inclines and it's just more suited to me. It's still like a go-kart track, whereas 
Jab Fest and Mandela Park over the hill. Don't get me wrong, I love that layout, but it's just not as suited to me as it would be to a 360 motorsport park. So that sort of ties in with both. I do like a good wet day, but I also like like a nimble track, no short and twisted. Do you happen to have some unique personal superstition or ritual you have before a race? What is that? If I'd, I've only noticed it now the last while, after the last few events, and at the start line, before every run, may it be practice, a battle, qualifying, anything. I always do it at the start line. I'm pulling the handbrake, and we still have a stock handbrake in our car just for parking around the yard and stuff. I make sure it's down. Every single race, I'm playing with the stock handbrake, make sure it's down. And like it's never, it never bees up all weekend at a race weekend because you usually get parked on a flat pattern area. But I still, I bang it off the bottom of the floor. I don't know why it is, but it's just, it's always been with me, and I'm just, there's no point changing that. Like, because once I do that, I feel comfortable then. It's weird, I know, but bear with me. What's the longest you've gone without sleep before a race? When was that, and any reasons? Um, nearly every event. I've never lost sleep over a race, like I would never be too nervous to go to sleep. But this is an all personal insight to me. I hate long journeys to a race. Like my, I live in the Northern Ireland and all the tracks are down south. So like Mandela Park is four and a half hours from our house. 360 Motorsport Park is six and a half hours. So if we have an early start in the morning, say we're leaving at four o'clock, I maybe not go to sleep, I just get in the truck and go to sleep down the road. Cause I hate sitting on a motorway or just a long journey and just, you've nothing to do, you know what I mean? Like, as a young boy like me, like on, at four o'clock or five o'clock in the morning, the phone is not a lot to look at. So I'll either just stay up on her before or I'll just stay up all night and just sleep on the way down. The last round in Mandela Park, I fell asleep right on the road twice and I woke up with them in Mandela Park. I was the happiest ever. I didn't see the journey on the way down because it's just that boring. What is the most bizarre and unexpected thing you've seen on track during a race? Um, it's nothing major so far to my drifting career. The most bizarre moment I think I've had is at Watergrass Hill in Cork, which was round two this year of Irish Cup Championship and. I was doing a chase run against a driver, Matt Smith. And the first corner of Watergas Hill is downhill and round. And you have a kitty litter on the outside. Obviously, if you go off track, it slows you down. And that's okay. We were coming down, this, down the street and he's pulling away, pulling away, pulling away. And I didn't think he was going to make it. And I was right. Because when he initiated and went through the first clip, I came in beside him, but then he just veered off and veered off and veered off, and he was offline at this point. And then all of a sudden, I just seen stones or kitty litter go everywhere, and the car just flipped. I just came back down again. It's not a massive moment, like it does happen in motorsport, but I'm in competition maybe four or five years now, and I can't say that I've seen it all, if you know what I mean. Like I'd say that is probably my most bizarre moment so far that I've had, but I'm sure there will be worse ones to come along the way. Have you ever had to deal with car sickness while drifting? No, I wouldn't really get... I wouldn't get any sort of sickness. The only thing about me is I get real nervous. Like practice, I'll be okay. You can't win practice. So there's nothing to be nervous about in practice. It's literally just... It's like revision. In your school revision, you revise for a test and then you go and perform. But... Qualifying, my first qualifying run is always a shaky one. Like the last round I could feel my heart pumping out of my chest. And I haven't done that in a long time. I don't know why it was so bad then. But I am real shaky. But that is the only sort of, you say, sickness or illness that I would have. Definitely, yeah. I've never actually been physically sick before going to drifting or nothing. I've just got really, really nervous. I just... I sit in the car and just don't want anybody to talk to me. Just close all doors, all windows, and I just zone out. And I'm dead on, but 
until you get to the start line, it's just having just hits you in, your heart head starts going, you're thinking of this and that, and if I mess this up, then, then I'm, I'm a big overthinker, it's probably the problem, but I would say that's what can conclude my second question. So we we'll move on to the next one. What is the best advice you've taken from a fellow drifter? Um, I don't really know how to answer that one. I mean, I have a lot of friends in the drifting. Like, what way do I word it? Like, we've a lot, like, obviously, we're all friends in the drifting. We talk to each other on the line before qualifying and stuff. But the only sort of advice we would give each other is like track conditions and track layout maybe if we're struggling you know we'll talk to or say i'm struggling with maybe clip four to five and they'll say oh well, i tried this and so on it worked it's the only sort of feedback that maybe we give each other or i would give or been given if you know what i mean um but yeah it's usually just we help, we help each other right the drift scene like drifting is one big family so yeah so I'm going to end this video, I just want to say thank you so much for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed getting a glimpse into my drifting journey. Drifting is my passion and sharing these stories with you makes it even more special. If you have any questions or want to know more, please feel free to comment and share this video. And if you are ever at an event, please don't hesitate to come and say hi. Keep chasing your dreams and remember it's not about the destination but the incredible ride along the way. So I'll see you on track.